How to Qualify Facebook Messenger Traffic Here are the do's and don'ts of qualifying traffic so that people who are engaging with your Facebook Messenger chatbot are the right people. Let me clue you in on a powerful marketing secret on Facebook. Volume is worthless. I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people because a lot of marketers view big traffic numbers with filtration in mind. They're thinking that as long as they can convert one in a hundred, this means that they can pump millions of people through a sales funnel and their income will explode. You can't have that volume mindset with Facebook Messenger chatbot because you run the risk of seriously and irreparably damaging your reputation. Don't do it. Resist that temptation. Here's what you need to do. Target only niche-specific pages. The name of the game in marketing brands on Facebook is to find niche-related pages. Since the people that go to those pages are already interested in the same niche you're in, the more active you are in those pages' comment section, the more visible your brand becomes. As long as you're not spamming those pages, your comments make for great branding opportunities. Your comments, which are linked to your Facebook page profile, can actually pull traffic from those pages. This is a great way of qualifying traffic because you're only advertising on pages that are specifically related to your niche. This means only people who are actually interested in your niche would see your link to your Facebook page and end up on your page. Target only niche-specific groups. Another way to pull traffic from Facebook is to hang out at groups that discuss issues and brands related to your niche. Now, group marketing is a little tricky because you can't advertise your Facebook page. When you post in a group, it has to be your personal account. Accordingly, you have to walk on eggshells and be very diplomatic. The best way to pull traffic from niche-specific groups is to actually share your Facebook page posts. This is why niche specificity is crucial. If people in the group get the impression that you're simply just trying to spam and your page really has nothing to do with the needs of the people in the group, you will get blocked. And before you know it, your page might even get banned and deleted. Still. When you target only niche-specific groups, you're basically engaging with people who have self-segregated themselves based on their interests. Use your page to call visitors to action. Once somebody finds their way to your Facebook page, you have a tremendous opportunity. Don't blow it. Maybe they found you through an ad. Maybe they found you through a post you shared in a group. Or maybe they found you through a comment on another page. Regardless of how they find you, call them to action. Now, here's the secret. You have to call them to action based on their needs. You can't just say, click on this button to get a hold of me. Well, any random bum can get a hold of you, and that might not be the right customer for you. You have to use emotional triggers targeted to the needs of your prospect. For example, if I sell agricultural support services on my Facebook page, a good call to action may be a pinned post saying, we offer a wide range of solutions for small organic farmers. If you're looking for higher yields or you're looking for local community sales resources, click here to chat with us. We have the right resources for you. See what I did there? I specifically addressed their needs. These are people who are looking for places to sell. These are people looking for tips to improve their organic farm's output. I'm not being broad. I'm not being vague. And I'm not assuming that they know how to read my mind. I am not doing any of that. Instead, I was very specific as to what they have problems with. This requires a high level of knowledge regarding your typical customer's profile. What are their problems? What are they struggling with? What frustrates them about their business? And your call to action must speak to those so as to pump as much qualified traffic to your Facebook Messenger chatbot as possible. Pump as much traffic to pages that have your chatbot link. If you have web pages up, pump as much relevant traffic to those pages. Usually, your content will filter people and then at the end, get people to click on your Facebook Messenger link. The chatbot will take care of the rest. In a later video, I will tell you the many different forms this takes. But what's important is that you use your website to draw eyeballs to your chatbot link. Boost your brand's visibility and make it easy for prospects to see your chatbot link. The more you engage with people on social media and on many different messaging platforms, the more people can see your competence, credibility, and authority. In other words, they get an opportunity to see your brand in action. Remember, when you are actually sharing useful information with people, your brand improves. You stand out from the crowd. You're not just another person blasting out generic information that everybody already knows. Instead, you're getting straight to the heart of their concerns and resolving problems at the individual level. 
This means you must always have a way of pulling people to some kind of page that has your chatbot link. This is very important because if you don't have some sort of payload or call to action in your overall messaging strategy online, you're not that visible. People might think you're a genius. They might agree that you're an expert, but there's really no way your brand could benefit from it because you're not pulling them to your Facebook page. You're not telling them to check out your website. You're not doing any of that. You're not even drawing attention to your profile. Whatever you do, draw attention to yourself in such a way that somehow, some way, an interested person will end up on a page with your chatbot link. That's the payload. That's the whole purpose of you getting out there, looking at all these conversations, and sharing your two cents.